Hi, and welcome back to the bakery. This is Chef Paul Ashman coming to you from the bakery here at the Advanced Technology Center at Gulf Coast State College. And I've got a special piece of equipment that I'm gonna be talking about today. And this is our brand new chocolate 3D printer. Yeah, that's right, I said a 3D printer. So we're gonna go over some of the aspects, capabilities, and then we're actually gonna watch this thing print some chocolate. So how does a 3D printer work? Well, basically all 3D printers use software called STL files. And what an STL file is, is basically it takes a image and chops it into layers. That's why they call it additive manufacturing because basically we're adding layer upon layer upon layer upon layer. And that's what this machine's gonna do, only it's gonna do it with chocolate. Now, there are some things we have to do first. We do have to have our chocolate tempered, okay? And that's really important. What we're gonna do is we're gonna take our tempered chocolate, we're gonna use that machine I showed you in an earlier video, and we're gonna fill a syringe, this syringe, all the way up with chocolate. That syringe is gonna be loaded into this port on the machine. Now, the neat thing about it is, is that this machine has a heated print head. So it actually is gonna keep the chocolate at the proper working temperature while this tray moves around and it actually prints whatever I decide to have it print. So we're gonna set up the machine and get ready and make some cool stuff. Welcome back. So we've got our chocolate creator and this is the Chalk Edge version 2.0 machine. And what we're gonna do now is we're gonna load it and get ready to do some test printing. So we've gotta have a few things done first. We've got our tempered chocolate and it's gotta be tempered. And I've got my syringe and I've got a fill end on it. And I've got a tip, which I'll be showing you in just a moment. We're gonna go ahead and turn the machine on first so we can have it warmed up and heating up. And I'm gonna flip my power button and let it get warmed up. And you'll see it actually start moving around here in just a moment. And it's gonna get ready to load the chocolate. So let's go ahead and fill up the syringe. What I'm trying to do is make sure I don't get any air whatsoever in this syringe. So I'm gonna put this tip down into my chocolate and try my best to fill this syringe all the way with just chocolate and no air. It's really important because the air will actually give a break in your printing and you don't want that. All right, so I filled it up to the halfway mark. I'm gonna take this tip off of here. And then I'm gonna put on the, and this is a 0.7 millimeter print head. Very small. It just presses on, and now we're gonna load the machine. So, we're gonna hit next. And we're gonna load it, and I've put 15 milliliters of chocolate in it. So I'm gonna press the 15 milliliter button, and you'll see the chocolate machine start to move. I'll tip out this. And now what I'm gonna do is insert the syringe into the heated print head. And then this has gotta slide actually right into And if you'll notice, it's dripping chocolate. And that's actually a really good thing. What I'm wanting it to do is have enough chocolate and it be fully charged. Now I'm gonna basically take, click next, and I'm actually gonna retract that just a tiny bit. And what it does is it stops the chocolate from flowing. Now, and I'll give it a little wipe. And now guess what? We're ready to print some chocolate. So I'm going to move this out of the way. And we're going to 
take and look at a first few designs. Now, if you'll notice, I've got a piece of paper, parchment paper, on the print plate. And I've confirmed, and we're going to print a, um, a couple of designs. So let's take a look. We can actually print the plain square, and if you'll notice, it's dripping just a little bit. I'm finding, as one of the new users with this, there are some things that I've got to do to make sure I get clean prints. And one of them usually is I'll hold something underneath that print head until I'm ready to actually make a print. That way, I don't get any drips. But it's in an area that's not going to be a problem. Let's take a look, and we're going to print. How about we print a, a heart and a heart. And if you could see right here, and here we go. And let's go ahead. I'm going to make sure our um, paper is nice and flat. The magnets are holding it down. And now we hit print. It's going to take about three minutes. It's going to actually extrude nine millimeters worth of chocolate. That's out of the syringe. And if you notice, it's actually printing the product right now. Now, that little bit of chocolate that spilled in the middle, we don't have to worry about that because it is tempered chocolate. So I'm actually just going to be able to peel that right off. At the end of this process, we'll be able to basically pick this up. Now, one more thing I want to show you. In working with 3D printing, sometimes we find that, well, we've got to do things to help our printer work a little bit better. And knowing chocolate as I do, I find that, well, sometimes you've got to get the chocolate cooled down a little bit faster so that it will set up. So we put one of our other 3D printers to work and actually printed a stand to hold a small USB powered fan. And I'm going to turn that fan and aim it right here so it's going to help us to cool the chocolate down a little bit. You might see the fan in the edge of the picture. It's just something to help us get the chocolate a little bit cooled off so that it sets up in the right way. And as you can see, it's filling in the designs. The printer knows just when to stop. The printer knows just when to start. It's going to fill in and actually do a crosshatch pattern. We're down to just over a, a minute and a half left of the print job. Now, some chefs would look at this and say, well, that's not very practical to be able to, to print something that slow. Well, we're working on finding ways to actually make this print a little bit faster, especially if we can get the chocolate to set up faster. One of the reasons it prints this slowly is because that chocolate has to have time to actually set up before another layer gets added. So if I can find a better way to cool the chocolate down so that it sets faster, then we can speed up this printer. And that's something that I'm working on. Hopefully, we can come up with a way to solve that particular issue. But yes, we can pipe this out by hand. But if I've got to do 50 or 100 or 500 of them, this one's going to do them all exactly the same every time. And like I tell my students all the time, there is no quality without consistency. So let's check this thing out. We're almost done. You'll notice it's going back and forth across. This has a couple of purposes. The main reason is, well, the fill-in ties the entire structure together so that the entire structure will be able to be lifted off and placed however you want it. It'll actually stand up if we want it to because the chocolate is tempered. And if you remember when I talked about tempering chocolate, it creates a proper crystalline structure so that it all holds together and about eight more seconds, and we're done with this print. So there we go. Our first 3D print live on film. We're gonna do a lot more of these.
All right, welcome back. So it's been about five minutes. I wanted to let the chocolate fully set up. So we're gonna take it off the paper now. All I have to do is remove the magnets holding down my piece of parchment paper. Bakers are cheap, so I'm going to reuse this parchment paper. But there it is, our nice 3D printed piece of chocolate. And if you'll notice, it'll stand up in my hand, lay down on a plate, ready to decorate whatever type of dessert you want. All right, so thanks so much. And make sure to watch out. We're going to do a lot more videos of all different kinds of chocolate 3D printing. This, by the way, is actually called 2.5D because it's basically a flat layer. Yes, it is a 3D object, but it's really only printing in one or two layers. We're going to print some really cool tall stuff moving in what we call the Z-axis, so make sure to keep an eye out for those. This is Chef Paul. Thanks for joining me.